What is up, YouTube? This is Cody on the Real Sports Talk here, bringing you your post-race video for the Capital City 400 at Richmond. It was a race that was kind of as I predicted, uh, kind of slow to begin with, but it picked up toward the end. Not a ton of cautions like I was expecting. Expecting I was expecting at least one or two green-white checkers there at the end after that caution with like 15 to go, flew, 20 to go, whatever it was. And there were only five in the race, but they came at opportune times that led to some decent racing. There was some controversy there with Carl Edwards and um, Tony Stewart with that restart. Carl Edwards being black flagged. A lot of mistakes on pit road. And Jimmy Johnson, obviously, he's had history of pit road troubles, and he was struck again this race by that. <clears throat> but... Kyle Busch ends up winning this race at Richmond, making it the perfect weekend for him after his brother drives to victory lane in the Nationwide Series race, edging out Denny Hamlin in a Kyle Busch Motorsports car in the Nationwide Series for the first time. So it's a good weekend for Kyle Busch. He gets his first win of the, se the season, and I think it can really be a breakout win for him. Now 11th in the points, I think he can break out of this cage, this slump he's been in, and he can really move forward in the championship hunt because once he gets into that top 10 he's going to be right up there with the championship contenders as far as um winning races and being toward the top when the chase actually starts so that's good for kyle and moving forward i think he's going to be a threat and it's also his fourth in a row with um at the spring richmond race so that's that's a record he kept on getting there and dale jr also got a respectable finish in second place and the um third place car ended up being tony stewart who was awful on restarts all night and denny hamlin came in fourth he was a guy i pred predicted would win this race i picked the joe gibbs racing car but i just ended up picking the wrong one i guess to win and um but they did run well casey kane comes home with a top five finish moving up to a few positions in the point standings Still not where he wants to be, though. Jimmy Johnson finishes in sixth after coming back from that penalty. Clint Boyer and Mark Martin, Michael Waltrip Racing Cars, finish in seventh and eighth position. Brad Keselowski in ninth. And Carl Edwards finishes in tenth after being black flagged and put to the back of the field. So, it really came down with the second to last restart. It was a case of... Carl Edwards jumping the start. There was a lot of confusion there. Carl Edwards was on top of the scoring pylon, pylon in, on the track, even though he wasn't in the lead, and that confused him. So he tried to get the jump over Tony Stewart because he was placed in the second-place position by NASCAR. He was in second place. Tony Stewart spun the tires on the start. Carl shot off before the restart box, even though Tony Stewart already initiated the start of the race there and spun the tires. Tony was just off on restarts all night. So that's how Carl got his black flag. He restarted too soon. And a uh, caution flag came out, that last one, that Tony Stewart was very upset about at the end of the race. He thought it was just a bottle or something on the racetrack. And, but you can't say, as long as there's something on the racetrack, I think it's okay to throw the caution, especially if it's a solid piece of an object or something, because you don't know if the car is going 150 miles an hour and you're NASCAR and you just catch a glimpse of that thing, you don't know whether it could be detrimental to a race car or not cut a tire. We'd have bigger issues than just having something on the track then, and that can lead to an even more, um, an even worse event on the racetrack. So that's something that you want to throw the caution for, and that's something that the drivers are just going to have to deal with be because it's for their own safety and it's overall helping an owner's pocketbook potentially with those wrecked race cars potentially being in the wall and collecting other cars. Some notables from this race. Um, Jeff Gordon finished in 23rd after going down uh, two laps down early after cutting a tire and he had to pit under green flag conditions. Martin Truex Jr. finishes in 25th and Kevin Harvick and Greg Biffle finished in 18th and 19th. And the points really narrowed up after this race with Biffle's poor outing. You have Greg Biffle on top, Dale Earnhardt Jr. now in second, Denny Hamlin now in third, both of them moving up two spots in the standings. Matt Kenseth falls back to fourth. Those guys are all within 10 points of Greg Biffle. And Martin Truex Jr. falls back three positions after his poor outing in 25th place. And Jimmy Johnson still moving his way up in the championship hunt with his finish there. And Kevin Harvick moves back spot to seventh. In eighth is Tony Stewart, 
And um, Kyle Busch, after his win, as I said, moves up to 11th. Jeff Gordon now in 17th in the points. He moves up a couple spots. Casey Kane still continuing his move to the front of the point standings after a, a terrible start. And I think this, along with Kyle Busch being a turning point for him, I think it can be a turning point for Dale Earnhardt Jr. as well. But he's historically started off seasons well. So not as well as he has this one of the past years, but he will, I think, moving forward, get a win possibly next week at Talladega. He's great at Talladega. Um, I think he's going to get a win at some point in the season, and he will end up making the chase. Just a matter of how strong he's running around that time frame, those last 10 races, if he's going to have a sh- I know he's going to be in position in the chase. I'm almost positive, but just the way he's running, I haven't seen him run this well, and I haven't seen him this confident. That's the thing that I've seen in interviews and stuff. Him actually, It seems like he's having fun this year. In past years, it's been all business. He's just getting back to racing and having a good time on the racetrack, and he's enjoying his time with Steve Letarte, that crew chief he's had for a couple of years now. So, overall, I think this could be a big year for Junior, and he's just building, and he keeps on going, getting better and better, and I think as we move forward, if he doesn't fall off, he could be definitely one of the guys that we can see as a title contender moving forward, but we got to see about that. I think next week at Talladega is going to be a big week for him, with that being one. He doesn't necessarily like restrictor play tracks. He actually says that short tracks are his favorite, but... He is one of the better short track racers, that's for sure. Or, excuse me, restrictor plate track racers. And we'll be moving to Talladega next week. I think that if he can build off this week with a win next week, I think that's going to be huge for him. And he he's probably going to be my pick to win at Talladega next week. And moving forward to Talladega, that's a whole different animal from Richmond. It's over double the mileage that Richmond is uh, on the actual length of the racetrack much wider. Uh, We're going to see some four, possibly five wide action there. And it's a lot different from Daytona, even though they're both restrictor blade tracks. Talladega is much wider. You got start finish line after the trioval at Talladega. And it should be an interesting race next week. We got to make sure, or we got to see if uh, the pack drafting is going to be back or if it's going to be back to the tandem stuff. And I will talk more about that in the video next week, right here on the Real Sports Talk.